Hello and welcome folks, it's Azathen, and I'm going to clear my throat at the very first 10 seconds of this episode, so sorry. <clears throat> Alright, we're diving right back into Diablo 2, you can see we're right here where we were, Cairn Stones, and we're going to just go ahead and wander up this, this road that I have never, ever <laughs> explored. Guys, I don't know why you would think I've ever, oh look at that, the underground passage, exactly where we needed to go, and I've seemed to have partially explored it. You may have missed like five minutes of this episode as I dicked around with my video capture software. Got it all wrong. Okay, so uh, we found the underground passage and we're going to try to find the exit into the dark wood because that's where the tree that we need to find is and crazy ladies are attacking us. Oh my god, they're blue now. <laughs> I never really bothered me as a child the fact that the enemies in this game their increase in power level or if they wanted to change how something looked they wanted to give you a whole new monster they would just put a new color on it that seemed fine to me because frankly if i was in real life and i saw a brown spider i'd be like oh that's terrifying then if i saw a spider that was like bright fluorescent orange i would totally accept that that spider is much more dangerous oh just run them all over with that thing God, that never gets old. <laughs> I'm going to be using Molten Boulder on Diablo, and he's going to be shrugging it off, and I'll be like, but look how cool it is, though. You have to agree, it is kind of cool. As I die. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh. God, I just... There's something about this game. I played Diablo 3, and I actually really enjoyed it, believe it or not. Um, there were certainly some flaws. But there's just something about... Diablo 2 and the way it looks and the way it feels and the way everything just sort of comes together that far surpasses Diablo 3 in my opinion I'm not saying I'm right I'm just saying that's my opinion plus two maximum damage we're gonna keep that for now but we can go ahead and be like oh we don't even have enough strength to use it I think what 35 strength I bet we have like 20 oh 23 okay uh, you can just hang out here we're gonna pick up some hard leather armor and see if it's any better than what we have. Actually, yes it is. So we're gonna switch those out, toss that, grab a rejuve potion, and head on our way. Inventory management, guys, half of this game. I don't know why it's fun. It's also half of like <clears throat> the other game I'm playing, uh, Baldur's Gate. I love Baldur's Gate, but I do realize I spend an inordinate amount of time in my item slots. Just messing around with them. It's like, oh, this is like, oh, why am I using, I want Boulder. I want to go through those guys and kill the shaman. Oh, and he gets run over. <laughs> it's 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 almost a perverted pleasure for me because I I see that the shaman is gonna get hit, but it's almost like it doesn't know it's gonna get hit, which makes it all the, oh wolves just tearing everything apart. I'm almost forgetting they're there until they kill things before I can get to them. All right, click 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 all the massive clicking. Oh my, look, I was about to say, that's a lot of stuff, and then suddenly it wasn't. A small charm, much like a grand charm, except tiny. Let's see what it is. Plus one defense, plus one to strength. Alright, now, this is how I usually like to do my, um, my charms. I like to have the one slots here, I like to have the three slots here, and then just leave room for a couple two slots, and mix it up the way you want. Well, actually, I guess, not really, because this is going to be taken up by a special item we're going to get. I think in the first act, if I'm not wrong. It should be in the first... No. Uh, no, no. Second act. For those of you who know, woohoo! Those of you who don't, it'll be a fun surprise. Very neat thing in the game. I might actually start trying to mess around with it because the item that you get has a lot of metagame opportunities and like it does so much stuff. And I never explored it. I fully enjoyed this game without having to mess around with the Herodric Cube. Spoilers. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, maybe you guys can see me like waste items for absolutely no reason trying to get something special out of the Herodric Cube. Alright, we cleared the Underground Passage Level 2. That should mean that we won't be running into another one of those and the next exit we find will be the official exit into the Dark Woods. Now I'm oh god I don't even have my <laughs> I didn't have my weapons equipped. That's so noob oh I so noobie.
I'm running out of stamina, of course, but I'm close to gaining a level. I wonder if it's like in other Blizzard games where when you gain that level, you automatically heal yourself all the way. I've always liked that mechanic. If you used it wisely, it was great. What was I playing recently? Like, where when you gain a level, everything around you takes damage and gets blown backwards. Oh, it was something... Mm. It must have been melee based, because I know there was a lot of things around me in melee. That... Oh, no, no. It was Diablo 3, I think. Yeah, it's Diablo 3. When you gain a level, you immediately regen all your health and everything. And uh, everything around you takes a pretty decent chunk of damage. Get out of my face! Ladies, I ain't got time for that. Oh, okay, apparently I do, actually. I have plenty of time for that now that I'm healed. Hmm, Arctic Blast. I know it's like the Sorceress's Fire Blast, but I just have no real interest in it. But, you know what? Ah, uh, uh, we gotta get more summon stuff. I've redone my hotkeys because I realized I was binding stuff to my video capture hotkey, which is a terrible idea. Lots more energy, because we ballers. I feel like some things like the Oak Sage, it gives you a 30% increase in health, and let's see what the ramping on that is. So like, next level is 35% health. I feel like things like this, you sort of just get the first one and then leave it at that. Because it doesn't appear that these spirits get any bonus from that. Okay, so these... Yeah, that's nice. Like I said, I think it's really neat that some of these get bonuses from previous applicable skills. Oh, come on. Are we going to do a full circle and I'm just not going to find anything? Oh, get out of my face. Regenning all my mana. And the wolves killed them all. Hmm... Guys, I think I'm lost. I hit a dead end. How boring. So, how are you all doing? I'd love to see in the comments whether or not... Uh, what I would like to know what your favorite class is. Because mine... I know it's new, but I really like the Paladin. I just have so many memories. It was the first class I ever played this game through with. So, all of my really cool, like, Oh my god, it's Mephisto! Or, oh my god, it's Diablo moments are all associated. Associated? associated with the paladin so he sort of got that special place in my heart but i'd love to know what uh class you played through this game first with and what build you went like if you were sorceress did you go frost lightning fire or did you do kind of a combination of both did you just power up meteor and use nothing else um and also when was the first gold item that you got because i still remember my first gold item it was a sword i think it was called like the letter opener or blood letter <laughs> that's significantly different yeah I think it was called blood letter it was a one-handed sword and it was awesome and then I found a pike that was gold and it was just overpowered with zeal like one poke and it would kill anything and with zeal you do like eight pokes in the time it would take to do one all right, run circles around these guys because oh they're so newbie oh they don't know how to do micro the enemies in this game have an awful micro. Much death, much killing. We're gonna go ahead and fill up the inside of this fire infested house with more fire. Oh my god, I think I know who that is. Is that tree head wood fist or tree wood head fist? <laughs> Ow, get away from me. And he goes down, leaving me a very, very pretty skull cap. Which unfortunately is probably not gonna be as good as my gold one. Yeah, that's not nearly as good. But, hey, Paige. Merry Christmas. Yes, you will. Ooh, we have an unidentified scepter. Alright, we've just finished killing a big group of people. So we're going to go ahead and go sell some stuff. Big part of this game, selling stuff. Armor is always extremely good to sell. As is... I'm going to have to put... Okay. I think it's just about time I start putting these gems in my my stash. I was going to say, armor's always good to sell, uh, as is as are things, such as scepters, staves, wands, whatnot. Also, always deposit your gold. 
just because if you die, you lose the gold that's on your body, or at least you lose a portion of it. Whereas if you die and your gold's all in your stash, you're fine. I don't have any use for a Jew potion, so we're going to drop them there for now. And now we can head back. We're going to find that tree because I know for a fact the tree had wood fist. Look, short staff. It could actually have some neat stats on it. And if it does, nope. But if it did, it would sell for a lot of money. But this dead tree pulses with energy. Hmm. I wonder what that could mean. Let's look at the scroll. Okay. That doesn't help me in the slightest. Alright, so we have the scroll. Take the scroll of Inephus to Akara. No, 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 no. We're not taking the scroll yet. Because if we take the scroll now, we're going to have to run through all that stuff again to get back here at the end of the day. So I'm going to run around here looking for the uh, the way gate, the waypoint. And you guys don't have to join me with that. Well, actually, I'll, if, if it takes a while, then I'm going to cut it and start looking some more. But as of right now, who doesn't want to watch me just murder things? Since oh look, a, a fallen camp. That's always entertaining. Wee! Lots of stuff everywhere. People dying. Oh, hunt down the the shamans as fast as you can uh, to avoid having to fight resurrected units. And just cast AOE abilities to take care of the fallen that sort of uh, congregate around you. God, so many us. I swear, I'm gonna get over that. Although I did feel slightly better, I was listening to one of Total Biscuit's podcast things, and he said that the reason that he doesn't say uh or uh or whatever else is because he spent so much time early on in uh <laughs> he spent so much time early on on radio, so it broke him of that habit. So I'm hoping that if I eventually do this for long enough, I will break myself of that habit. That or the lack of viewership will break me of that habit, and I will have to learn quickly or die trying. Oh my god, there's a lot of you guys kind of... Finally, it kind of makes sense that they congregate around this, you know, stone shelter sort of thing. I've never understood why they decided to just gather up out in the open in the middle of nowhere. Oh, they're kind of nomadic, it makes sense. Actually, it feels right for them. Oh! Oh my goodness. There's so many camps of these things, I don't understand how the world isn't already overrun. I mean, it's just me, right? I'm the only person in the entire world fighting these things. I'm pretty sure that's canon. Uh, I don't want to leave here yet. Nope. Oh, God. Champions. And these things tend to hit pretty hard. Alright. Not hard enough, though. I think we are good on mana and health potions right now. Nope, nope. Oh god, I'm so newbie. <laughs> Close to another level. I don't know if I get anything special at my next level. What level even am I? <laughs> uh, let's see, level 9. So, level 10? I think level 12 is the next big special uh, thing you, you get. Yeah, level 12. And saw this game goes by 6s. I guess it makes sense for the scaling and, you know, where they expect you to be based on your level. But I don't like it. I like, like I was going to say even numbers, but 6 and 12 are even numbers. God, I'm smart. Oh. I'm the smartest little video gamer you ever did see. Goodness. Mm. Sassy black Azathan. Oh, girl, you bet. Oh, you did not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You best think again before you attack me, because I got an axe, and I got wolves, okay? Bitch, you think I run around with wolves for no reason whatsoever? Oh, look, he, oh, they hungry. They hung, damn, Vile Hunter, that's a French-ass name. <laughs> you work that up, dude, Vile Hunter, you work it. Can I get your loot? Can I have it? Can I have it? Uh, everyone's, like, really confused right now. <laughs> Uh, go watch Saturday Night Live. Can I have your number? It's a great skit. And spoilers, the person playing the guy in that is played by a woman. <clears throat> so I expect that they have expert, hands-on experience uh, about <laughs> what they're doing and talking about. Probably a little exaggerated since it's from their point of view. But still, good. Come on, I just want the dark wood. Is this it? 
Is it? No, no, it's just, it's just rocks. It's just rocks. Oh God, thank you. Okay. Now we're going to take this back to Akara. We're like, hey, look, I found a scroll. Oh, very good. I have translated the runes on this scroll. You must find the cairn stones and touch them in the order that I have written. Oh my god, the cairn stones? Like, cairn blood hoof? Deckard cairn? Guys, I think I figured it out. It's all coming together now. Oh, this experience thing is going to wear off before I get to kill anything. Ah, no, there's stuff to kill. Oh, yay, new level. But what to put my skills in, you ask? Hmm, well, I'm thinking some more Molten Boulder. And we can probably go ahead and buff up strength a little bit. Our vitality and magic are really high. All right, so normally I just click these randomly until I get there. Okay, let's place. These appear to be upside down. One. No. No. What? All right, so if these are upside down, then that would mean I have to touch this one first. No, this one? All right, all right that's weird. Whatever. Uh, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh my god! Thunderbolts and lightning! lightning! Oh, that's... <laughs> it looks like the Eye of Sauron. All right, let's wander in, Bilbo. Oh, and there's exploded cows. <laughs> Our druid's kind of biased. He says, this is... Aw, oh, Deckard. Yeah, there's lots of stuff around. I'm gonna let you sit there until I clear it out. Not because I'm cruel to old people or anything, but it's totally for your own protection. Oh, God, these things... Archers, die, die, die. Just die. Just die. Just die. Just... God, just die. I'm gonna have to upgrade my agility so I can get some more hit. That was embarrassing. Like, crossbow, short staff, my wolves taking care of absolutely everything. Oh, more undead. God, it's so hard to see what's going on. It's just, like, it's just a mess of... Uh... Oh, my God. Oh, Griswold! Oh! Gr <laughs> Normally, Griswold is a really hard fight for me. Um, but that was... All right, I take it back, guys. It seems like the druid's kind of overpowered. Oh, my God. Oh, this is really stupidly easy with wolves. Let me know in the comments if it gets harder to play as the druid or if it gets easier. Because if it gets easier, I'm not. I'm just gonna quit and pick another class, and I'll speed up to where I'm currently at. I think I know that the necromancer is probably the hardest to play with, right? Super fragile. Uh, his abilities require a lot of skills to land and use correctly, and curses are sort of overlooked in general. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine having a grizzly bear. I mean, with what the wolves are doing. Can I have grizzly bear and wolves? I'm gonna have to look that up. Oh, Wurt's body, but we're just gonna take that, because that's the really important. All the money he bilked us out of in the first game. <laughs> if you guys don't know about Wurt, you should look him up. He was like the first gambling sort of thing. Oh, god. I actually really like the look of these... I was gonna say the look of those undead with the shields. I think they're very cool. Very distinctive. Uh, almost a Sinbad and the Seven Voyages kind of thing going on with them. Probably why I like them. It might look goofy to everyone else, but I was like, oh, it's awesome. Show me the giant claymation dragon now. <laughs> or the Cyclops. Or the Hydra. I think there was a Hydra, too. Oh, which I almost was about to be like, all right, guys, done. We cleared Tristram. Obviously, our work is done. Sorry, sorry, Deckard. Deckard Kane, leave this place. Kane's a lot quieter in this than he was in that. I mean, in Diablo three, Diablo three can't shut up. In this one, you're like, get home, Kane. God, just leave. And he's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll go. I'll now he's gonna get talkative. I will identify items for you at no charge. At no charge. I could do nothing to prevent the disaster which devastated Tristram. It would appear that our greatest fears have come to pass. Diablo, the Lord of Terror, 
has once again been set loose upon the world. As you know, some time ago Diablo was slain beneath Tristram, and when our hero emerged triumphant from the labyrinth beneath town, we held a grand celebration that lasted several days. Yet, as the weeks passed, our hero became increasingly aloof. He kept his distance from the rest of the townsfolk, and seemed to lapse into a dark, brooding depression. I thought that perhaps his ordeal had been so disturbing that he simply could not put it out of his mind. The hero seemed more tormented every passing day. I remember he awoke many times, screaming in the night, always something about the East. One day he simply left, and shortly thereafter Tristram was attacked by legions of foul demons. Many were slain, and the demons left me to die in that cursed cage. I believe now that Tristram's hero was that dark wanderer who passed this way before the monastery fell. I fear even worse, my friend. I fear that Diablo has taken possession of the hero who sought to slay him. If true, Diablo will become more powerful than ever before. You must stop him, or all will be lost. Well, there goes Deckard Kane long rambling explanation, but basically saying, hey, the guy you, you were doing uh the guy that you basically played in the last game is now a psychopath and he is Diablo. So you're gonna have to hunt him down. Yay! Okay, so she just gave me a ring if I'm not wrong. Yeah, she gave me a ring of poison resist. That was so nice of her. Filling up our second slot. Ooh. Okay, so let's see if we can yes. sell some items to Akara and then we're gonna call it quits and start up in the next episode. We're gonna whatever's next after this. Let's see. Alright, I'm gonna go four to life. I mean, that extra four defense is really not that super useful. Plus one to maximum damage or lightning resist 8%. Sorry, lightning resist. I don't need you till much later. And in much larger quantities than 5%. What's our quest log now? Okay. Oh, I know what our quest log is. Hold on, guys. Let me deposit this. Drop this. Alright, now that that's all safe, we're going to go to the Stony Field, I want to say. Yes. We go to the Stony Field. We run all the way over here. Do, do, by the way, I think that this thing is actually almost always right next to these cairn stones that you see up in the left. Got the mana regen, move down here, and here it is. This little moldy tome. And so it came to pass that the Countess, who once bathed in the rejuvenating blood of a hundred virgins, was buried alive. And her castle, in which so many cruel deeds took place, fell rapidly into ruin. Rising over the buried dungeons in that godforsaken wilderness, a solitary tower. Like some monument to evil is all that remains. The Countess's fortune was believed to be divided among the clergy, although some say that more remains unfound, still buried alongside the rotting skulls that bear mute witness to the inhumanity of the human creature. Hey, look at that! Quest log updated. Look for the tower in the Black Marsh beyond the Dark Wood. Now we already know where the Dark Wood ends and the Black Marsh begins, so we're going to go ahead, quit here, and we'll be jumping to that waypoint in the Dark Wood in the next episode, and we'll see if we can uh, find out what's going on with that Countess's tower. Sounds kind of... Guys, guys. Sounds kind of creepy to me. Y'all want to join me next time for a little creepy adventure? Keep me company. Maybe you can hold my hand. I get scared very easily. Anyway, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Once again, this is Azithin, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.